Hi, I'm Carly Gwen, and this is everything that I've tried to clear my skin within the past almost two years and what actually worked. Now, before I start, this is a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, I'm not a licensed dermatologist, but I am a licensed cosmetologist. So I do take a big interest in skin as far as makeup goes, um, of course, hair, nails, pretty much everything in the beauty industry. I am uh, very interested in it. And um, it doesn't mean that this will work for you, but here's a couple things that you can try. Here's everything that I've tried. Um, different products I've tried so basically this is just maybe some troubleshooting you can kind of go through and see what you've tried yourself maybe this will give you some ideas of how to clear up your skin I will say that I did not suffer from acne as a teenager but I did notice um, as an adult in my you know late 20s starting in December 2018 I did notice that I was getting some pretty significant red spots on my face, especially around my chin and my jawline. And after doing some research online, I figured out that that um, was probably tied in with hormones. And I am on birth control, so that's um, sometimes a side effect is that your hormones can kind of get like out of whack a little bit. Um, but I had uh, talked to my gynecologist and we had discussed uh, birth control that was supposed to kind of like help with acne a little bit more so I was a little bit confused uh, why I was seeing these kind of like red sores they weren't even acne like whiteheads are what you picture like normal acne to look like they were like sores almost like fever blisters kind of popping up around my chin especially like on either side of my chin um, and then some kind of on my jawline and then they just wouldn't heal and it got to be um, sort of these huge patches around my cheeks and I'll insert some photos um, from that time period kind of early 2019 and once it got that bad I figured it was time to see a dermatologist I hadn't seen a dermatologist since I was about 16 um, so I figured this was something I could try the dermatologist that I went to see basically told me that after examining my face with like his little like microscope little glasses um, he kind of was inferring that it was a topical issue so he went ahead and prescribed different and I tried it for a year and um, I think I have a couple photos I can put up I tried to take like progress photos um, as I was using the different and it was like helping but it wasn't completely gone and I know this is something where like you have to give it a couple months for it to kick in and I was trying to be patient about that but my skin was still kind of like looking really red and patchy and like it wasn't healing. So I decided in February of this year, which was a year of me using the different, that since it kind of wasn't completely gone, I was still struggling with the red patches and like the red blisters, um, that I was just gonna go ahead and stop using it. Um, I'm not a big medicine type of person, um, so if there's a way that I can solve a problem, you know, holistically or like kind of like using an at-home situation, um, I was gonna try that. And before I go further, I do want to let you guys know, of course, I wash my face. These are the two products that I use um, every day. So I use the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Cleansing Gel. This has the um, hyaluronic acid in it, which grabs moisture in the air and kind of locks it into your skin. This is the Neutrogena Ultra Light Cleansing Oil, um, which basically like doesn't... Basically neither of these like strip your skin and your skin doesn't feel like super tight like some face cleansers can kind of make you feel like um, I double cleanse uh, a couple youtubers I watch um, talk about double cleansing all the time so I tried it and I feel like my skin feels cleaner especially after I wear like a full face of makeup I'll definitely I'll start with the um, the cleansing oil first to make sure that I get all the makeup off especially the foundation and things like that and then I'll go through and use the hydro boost um, but I use this one twice a day when I wake up and then when I go to bed when I take my makeup off so um, I was washing my face just saying 
And then also with acne scarring, I um, was doing some research online and those red patches that would take forever to go away, they do heal eventually, but it would take like a month. Um, and I found that um, you can use apple cider vinegar mixed with water. So I have my little concoction in like one of these like little travel squeezy bottles and I put it on a cotton round and just kind of like tap it onto the spots um, kind of around my cheeks where I have the most acne scarring. So this is like, you know, old kind of little spots that haven't completely like disappeared. So I use this um, once a night basically after I wash my face. I also use witch hazel. So that's just like, you know, I get this at like the dollar store or Target, whatever. Um, witch hazel has like healing properties and it can help with like skin irritation. So that's another good thing. I use this as a toner basically. And then I have a list of everything else that I've tried. So here we go. So uh, of course I've tried the different, but I've tried face washes, um, you know, the clean and clear line, but I noticed that that made my skin feel really, really tight and really dry. Um, you know, non-comedogenic foundation. I always make sure that I'm getting, you know, foundation that's not going to clog your pores. Um, I washed all of my makeup brushes. Like after every time I would do my makeup, I would wash my brushes. Um, I wash my pillowcases more often. Um, you know, we were in quarantine from March to basically June, um, where I live in the Northeast, and I did not wear foundation for that entire time. And I was still noticing that I was getting these red bumps and the kind of the blister. So I was like, it can't be the makeup. Um, so I also tried Ola Hendrickson products. These are kind of pricey. Um, but I, again, after watching so many YouTube videos of um, a lot of people that really kind of swear by her skincare products. So I used um, the Glow 2O, I guess, the Glow 2O Dark Spot Toner. Um, apparently this was like highly recommended that it like kind of restructures your skin and, and uses the AHAs to like basically bring your skin tone back to normal. Um, I did notice that this kind of dried my skin out though. And then this, when I ordered this, it came with a mask that you're supposed to use twice a week. It's called the Fat Glow Facial. Um, and it's an exfoliator. It has PHAs in it. But again, it was really drying out my skin. It was like turning my skin like red, um, like it was irritated. So I decided to discontinue the use of these two. Um, also with those two, you kind of can't be in the sun. Um, they're like, it could cause a reaction. So I'm not sure I was using those last fall. So I wasn't in the sun as much. It's not like I was using them in the summertime. I also want to let you guys know that I do follow a daily vitamin regimen. So I take a daily multivitamin and then I also make sure I take a zinc supplement. So that's supposed to kind of like help with like skin issues as well. Um, I found that through um, some online research and I also spoke to an esthetician friend of mine, but we also used to work together at a salon and she mentioned that zinc is like a very powerful um, vitamin to have in your system to kind of help with your skin and like inflammation and things like that. So um, I made sure I added that in. And also after talking to her in June of this year, so just in the beginning of this summer, um, I had mentioned to her that I was having problems with my skin and I had never really had problems with my skin in my life before. And um, on top of like the zinc, she was asking me about my diet and you know, kind of like lifestyle questions. And I told her I work out a lot. I work out basically three to four days a week, um, high intensity workouts. And I'm like, I wash my face, I swear. Like, I'm not like out here leaving my sweat all over my face. Um, but she was like, so if you're doing all this stuff, and I told her all of the skincare products I had tried, um, she was like, have you examined your diet? And I was like, not really. I mean, I, I eat pretty healthy. So at that point, she suggested that I try to cut out dairy and sugar for one month. Now I will say that I do love dairy and I do love sugar. I love dessert, I love ice cream, and I love whole milk. So her telling me that was like, oh, no! And it was right around my birthday too. My birthday's in June and I was like, oh, I just wanted to get ice cream and cake for my birthday. So, I, but I was like, this will be a fun experiment. Um, I'm gonna give it a try. So basically what that meant was I had to cut out 
white bread so I just I just basically swap that out for wheat or whole grain because you don't need that like bleached white flour you basically just don't need it and um, I, so basically I cut out all dairy so no cheese no milk I mean I decided to try um, soy milk almond milk coconut milk I found out that almond milk was my favorite um, specifically almond breeze so basically each brand tastes a little bit different so I liked almond breeze the best it's not the same as whole milk I know not a lot of people still drink whole milk past like when you're a little kid but it's like my favorite um, so it's not the same but I noticed that it doesn't have like a weird taste to it and then cutting out ice cream was really sad um, but I was able to find um, some dairy-free ice cream options at the grocery store so that was cool and I don't go to like Whole Foods or um, Trader Joe's or anything like that it's a regular just I go to shop right so um, there are options um, I think a, di a couple different brands have dairy-free options and what my esthetician friend did tell me was that excess sugar consumption can lead to cellular dysfunction and inflammation in your body and that may have been contributing to the fact that my face was red and it had these red bumps and kind of blisters on there so she was like if you can cut down your sugar I mean in America sugar is not everything so it's very tough to do that so what I would try to do is uh, look on the nutrition labels for everything that I was buying at the grocery store and make sure there was no added sugar so basically I would it's not like it was a no sugar diet because that was like literally impossible um, and I wasn't doing this for like um, you know weight loss type of thing so I wasn't really worried about like calories or carbs or whatever like that and another thing to keep in mind is carbs do turn into sugar um, so I tried to just be mindful of that but I wasn't trying to like cut carbs um, but I did have like a lower sugar diet so I would make sure that I had under 20 grams of sugar a day and then as far as dairy I cut that out completely and then um, I'll insert some progress photos after a month I would say it was about a month I definitely noticed that there was a difference and I wasn't using any other face products or anything like that um, like I just told you guys I was using the witch hazel the um, apple cider vinegar mixed with water a little toner and then just continuing to use my two face products, uh, face facial cleansers. So I wasn't like doing anything crazy. I wasn't trying any, you know, new expensive like face face product. And then since it was summertime, I was just using my Neutrogena uh, clear face, just sunscreen. So this doesn't clog your pores and it's um, SPF 30. I also have one that I got to replace this one um, that's SPF 55. So. Um, if you're not using sunscreen, you should always use sunscreen on your face. That's from the makeup artist section of my life. So now it's September and months later, after I tried this the beginning of June, um, I have noticed a big difference. I, I will say I had like a couple red kind of spots pop up, um, but nothing, nowhere as near as frequent or as much as I used to. Um, so when they would pop up, I would do a couple things. So I would make sure that they were clean. So I would use the witch hazel on the little red spots. I would use um, Aquaphor. So this is from me, um, basically all my tattoo aftercare um, experience. So that is basically just like an ointment, little healing ointment. This is just the CVS brand. Um, and I would dab a little bit on there and then just make sure that I didn't touch it. Um, I would also use um, triple antibiotic ointment so bacitracin um, just basically like you know first aid ointment on there um, and then I also came across these tea tree oil acne patches so I just got these on Amazon and they come in three different sizes and they're just little circles and you can pop them on uh, a pimple and then when you wake up in the morning it's gone like it's like magic and since it's tea tree oil it's basically just like an antibacterial and um, it kind of like sucks up whatever the gross crap from your <laughs> pimple is like got going on in there and then when you take it off in the morning it's like flat and um, I noticed that the red spots were healing much faster um, with the use of the aquaphor and the acne patches. So just to sum it up real quick, um, eliminating the 
dairy and cutting down on sugar in my diet was another way to kind of like cut down on variables on what was really affecting my skin. So it could be diet based, it could be stress, it could be environment. Like um, when I started noticing my acne in December of 2018, I had just moved from my beach house to the city. So I was like, oh, maybe the air is different here. Maybe my skin's like freaking out reacting. But I also started a very high stress new job. And it was winter time, so I was like, oh, maybe my skin is just like freaking out because it's about to be really dry. So if this is something that you'd like to try, just make sure you do your research. Um, I did find a sugar-free detox food guide that kind of gave me some ideas on some better foods that I could be eating. Like, I don't really eat meat that much, but I tried to sub in fish for a couple meals a week um, to try to get more like benefits from that instead of eating like, you know, potatoes and things that convert into sugar and you know white bread anything that had bleached flour or refined flour um, you know and basically anything that tasted good so I jokingly called this diet all summer the cardboard diet because I felt like everything tasted like crap but I guess maybe you get used to it after a while um, and then since it is September now and I've been doing this for a couple months and noticed some good results I decided that I will not be bringing dairy back into my diet. So I'm going to keep going with the almond milk instead of the whole milk, which is very sad. And um, I have tried to do ice cream, like regular ice cream, um, and I kind of noticed like right away a red a red little dot would come up um, and would kind of turn into a blister. So um, I think it is um, officially the dairy. So I'm glad I did this experiment and I hope it helps you guys. But make sure you do your research on better foods you can be eating. Um, my cousin also suggested um, looking into the Whole30 diet situation, which is basically like a 30 day cleanse. So you can kind of reset your system. Um, and you basically don't eat like crappy sugary foods for 30 days. So it was very similar to what I was doing. Not exact, but she also gave me this cookbook, which is like a bunch of different ideas for Whole30. It has a bunch of recipes and it lets you know like who this could benefit, which spoiler alert, it's everybody. It's like if you have like rosacea or you know, it, it does say acne in here. It says like eczema. So like a lot of skin issues um, if you're having like digestive problems so basically cuts out all the variables and then you slowly add things back in to decide or like help you kind of figure out like what's really bothering you so I hope that was helpful again I'm not a dermatologist or a doctor of any kind I am a cosmetologist I care about skin I care about my skin and your skin um, I didn't find anything about this in my research which is why I'm making this video so if you've tried everything, if you have one of these buckets in your bathroom of just like everything you've tried, and I feel like I wasted so much money on all this stuff, but I'm glad I learned something. Um, nothing was really working. So um, if you've been trying and you're frustrated just like me, make sure you check your diet. Look inward and see what you can cut out, see what you can swap out, like do whole grain instead of white bread, um, do almond or coconut milk or soy milk instead of you know, skim or 2%, like that's still dairy. So um, it's something to try. It's, it's a little bit hard at first, but I think you get used to it. Um, I did find some great things that I think I'm just gonna keep in my diet. Like instead of pasta, I love pasta. Um, but I did find chickpea pasta. And guess what? It tastes just like regular pasta and there's like 23 grams of protein in every serving so I think I'm just gonna stick with that because like I said I work out a lot and I need my protein so why not just keep that going so um, thank you guys so much for watching if you have any comments or concerns or questions make sure you leave them in the comments and I will try to get back to everybody um, I think this was a really interesting thing to do over my summer with my cardboard diet and I'm really excited that something finally worked after almost two years of like freaking out and like things weren't clearing out my skin and now I feel like my skin looks really great. Um, I'm gonna put up a picture that I took with no filters, no Snapchat, no editing or anything. I was really excited and I was like, wow, I look really pretty. And I wasn't like, wow, my face looks like a pizza. So I think it, it really did help and I hope it helps you guys too. Make sure you subscribe. I know I have a couple different types of videos on my channel, vlogs, comedy, um, acting stuff and um, I love helping you guys out if I can 
you know, do that in any way. So um, I'll talk to you guys on my next one. Have a great day. Thanks so much.